The NASDAQ market is currently closed, with Navita Semiconductor Corporation, NVTS, last closing at $12.83 as of 4.01 p.m. GMT-4 on October 28, 2025, which represents a single-day loss of negative 7.76%, or a decline of minus $1.08 per share in the last session. The after-hours market showed a slight rebound, up around 2.38% to $13.14, a small positive flicker against a rather brutal Monday trading day for the gallium nitride and silicon carbide chip specialist. Now, while the headlines are all fixated on that sharp drop and the typical semiconductor sector rotation that drove it, the deeper, more significant piece of information that the market is beginning to process is not the short-term earnings miss, which is already priced in, but rather the highly strategic and surprisingly clear pivot towards the high-power, high-voltage application space, particularly in AI data centers and electric vehicles a move solidified by their recent announcement supporting the 800-volt DC power architecture for NVIDIA's next-generation AI factory computing platforms. That is a massive expectation-beating insight because it's not just about selling chips, it's about being structurally integrated into the bleeding edge of the industry's most demanding power applications, suggesting a potential shift from a consumer electronics-driven, volatile revenue stream to a more stable, higher-value enterprise and infrastructure focus. The general belief about Navitas, especially within the retail trading community on platforms like Reddit and X, is a classic tension between a promising technology and a financially messy balance sheet. The retail crowd is excited by the sheer potential of gallium nitride, or GAN, as the material of the future for power electronics. It's smaller, more efficient, and lighter than traditional silicon, which sounds like an instant win for fast chargers, EVs, and data centers. They see the stock's recent colossal move off its 52-week low near $1.52 to its recent high near $17.79 as proof that the GAN story is finally catching fire. This community is frustrated by the constant short-seller pressure and what they perceive as media bias focusing too heavily on current losses while ignoring the future design win pipeline. They treat the high short interest, currently sitting around 24.60% of the float, as a badge of honor and a sign of impending short squeeze potential, as evidenced by the high volume days that push the price violently higher. However, the reality is more nuanced, and this is where the contrarian take becomes essential. While the technology is powerful, the stock's volatility is being exacerbated by a short interest that is indeed very high, but a days-to-cover ratio that is still fairly low, hovering just over one day, meaning the shorts can exit their positions quickly if the price rises modestly, thus dampening the explosive short squeeze potential the retail community hopes for. Moreover, the Monday drop was a reaction to institutional investors quietly reducing exposure, a move that is driven less by the underlying technology and more by the current macroeconomic climate putting pressure on high multiple pre-profit growth stocks as the market prepares for November earnings. The core challenge is that the company is still reporting significant net losses, roughly negative $124.5 million on a trailing 12-month basis, which makes the risk appetite of large funds wary despite the revenue forecast of over 21% annual growth. Looking at the technical and volume data from the recent sessions, the daily swing on Monday, which saw the price crash through its intraday low near $12.61 before the aftermarket recovery, points to a clear capitulation event likely triggered by a significant institutional block sale or simply a widespread profit-taking move after the substantial run-up. High trading volume, even on a down day, indicates high conviction on both the selling and buying sides, essentially a massive turnover of shares from weak hands or profit-taking funds into new hands who are buying the dip and positioning for the next catalyst. The positive volume balance indicator that had been strengthening over the prior weeks, showing higher volume on up days, suggests the underlying upward momentum had indeed been strong, but the sharp correction has now thrown that into doubt. The Relative Strength Index, or RSI, which had been in the overbought territory above 70, signaled a cooling off was overdue, and Monday provided that harsh realignment. It felt like panic selling in the moment for many retail traders watching the level of 14 give way, leading to a cascade of stop-loss orders. Yet, the price has found a temporary floor near the $12.50 level, which corresponds to a key previous resistance point, now acting as support, a technical sign that bulls still have a line in the sand. 
Hedge fund activity, according to the latest 13F filings, shows a mixed bag, while firms like Renaissance Technologies initiated a new, significant position, other large funds like BlackRock showed a slight decrease in their holdings. This split shows the institutional disagreement on Navitas. One side sees the value proposition in the long term, while the other prioritizes de-risking the near-term volatility and unprofitability. The company's core business model is centered on developing and marketing gallium nitride power integrated circuits, or ICs, and silicon carbide power devices. These are not incremental improvements. They are fundamentally different materials for power switching that offer superior efficiency and smaller form factors compared to traditional silicon, which is why it became a favorite in the consumer electronics fast charging market. Think the small, high-power laptop chargers. That was the first phase of their growth. Now, the second phase, the one driving the current tension, is the move into higher power markets, electric vehicles, where efficient power delivery is critical to range and charging speed, and massive AI data centers, where power consumption is one of the biggest bottlenecks. For example, their recent announcement about supporting NVIDIA's 800-volt DC power architecture for the AI factory is not about a consumer charger. It's about potentially integrating into the heart of the next wave of energy-hungry AI infrastructure. This is the reality that exceeds the simple fast charger company expectation. Older reports show a history of high R&D spending, which is necessary for a technology leader, and a consistent pattern of quarterly net losses, which is typical for a high-growth company in a pre-mass adoption phase that needs to secure design wins now to reap the rewards later. The quarterly revenue has shown sequential growth, which is a positive sign, but the scale is still small with trailing 12-month revenue around $68.17 million, demonstrating that profitability is still a distant goal. The social media discussions on Navitas are a volatile cocktail of hope, technical analysis, and conspiracy theories, a perfect example of crowd psychology in modern trading. On Axe, you see frequent posts about the insider knowledge of new design wins or the short sellers manipulating the price down on low-volume days, a common sentiment for highly shorted stocks. On Reddit, the conversation often centers around buying pressure, holding for the long haul, and the notion that the stock is intrinsically worth far more than its current valuation based on future potential in EVs and data centers. Retail investors are undeniably frustrated by the recent dip, especially those who bought near the highs, feeling tricked by the market's quick pivot. They are actively tracking the short interest updates, viewing every slight reduction in shorted shares as a win and every jump as confirmation of institutional foul play. This emotional involvement is what drives the exaggerated volatility. The data, however, provides the necessary grounding. The short interest is indeed high, validating their concern about downward pressure, but the high volume and relatively low days to cover ratio make a sustained explosive short squeeze an uphill battle without a major unexpected catalyst. The narrative of AI factory adoption is what is currently providing the emotional fuel, linking Navitas to the most powerful and popular theme in the market. This connection is not merely hype, the partnership is real and addresses a clear pain point in the industry, which is why this new focus is a significant reality check for those still viewing it only as a consumer electronics play. Shifting to the future, the expectation now is that the stock will consolidate around this recent low before its next earnings report, scheduled for early November, which is a significant near-term catalyst. The reality, however, is that the price action until that report will be dictated less by fundamentals and more by options expiration gamma positioning and the ongoing battle between institutional short sellers and retail long holders. A crucial opportunity lies in the speed of the EV and data center adoption cycle. If Navitas can announce major new design wins in the automotive sector or provide clearer, more substantial guidance on the AI data center revenue timeline, that would be the true expectation versus reality breakout moment. The risk remains execution, as the company needs to translate its superior technology into large-scale profitable manufacturing and delivery. The market is not paying for future potential forever. It needs to see a clear path to generating free cash flow. The next earnings call needs to clearly articulate the revenue ramp in those high-power markets to quell the financial risk concerns. If the company reiterates its commitment to exiting low-margin consumer segments, even at the expense of near-term top-line growth, that will actually be a strong, authoritative signal for long-term investors, contrasting with the retail expectation of all-out growth at any cost. 
Looking ahead, traders will be keenly watching the short interest figures released mid-month to see if the recent sell-off has tempted more short sellers to pile in, which would increase the fuel for a potential, albeit unlikely, short squeeze. The dominant narrative in retail spaces will continue to be the GAN for AI theme, and any news mentioning power efficiency for large models will be magnified and absorbed instantly into the stock price. The ultimate test will be whether the infrastructure deals can offset the revenue gap left by shedding consumer electronics sales. The final word on Navitas, then, is that the market's initial expectation that a promising technology stock would keep running until profitability was imminent was too simplistic, leading to the recent violent correction. The deeper reality, however, is that this correction has stripped out some of the speculative froth while simultaneously reinforcing a higher value, more critical strategic pivot towards AI and EV infrastructure, which is a far more powerful long-term story than what the stock was 